Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. May I take your order? Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, patterns to write and solve equations. And so these patterns are going to come uh, from tables generated from situations. And so uh, you might have seen uh, input-output tables in the past like this. Uh, for example, let's say that I have, you know, a bunch of inputs like um, let's get a different color here. Let's say that I got three and then 18. And already you're probably thinking, hmm, I know the rule. But maybe you do, maybe you don't. And so now you're probably thinking, all right, I know the rule. And maybe you're thinking, I definitely know the rule. And so that no matter what you put up in here, right, no matter what value you put in, for x, you know that you're going to multiply that by 6, and so down here it's going to end up being 6x, right? That's the output. So no matter what I put in for x, the output is always going to be that. You also might have seen input output, ta output tables that look like this. And so let's say that I put in 2 and 13 pops out. So again, you're asking yourself, how did I get from one to the other? Right, or maybe I put in uh, 5, and then this pops out. And then I put in 30, and this pops out. And so that, that no matter what I put in over here, okay, on this side, it's going to be that number plus whatever I changed it to. So in this case, it would be plus 11. Now the trick to this is that the inputs right that will be our x that will be our um, our independent variable and then our dependent variable over here would be our y right and y depends on what happens to x so y equals whatever i had for x in this case plus 11 so when i had 5 for x 5 plus 11 gave me 16 right when x equaled 5 y equaled 16. So the whole idea here is that you can find a pattern that's going to describe the relationship between your variables. So in this case, I've got the number of tickets, n, and the cost. And so what I want to know is what would the cost of six tickets be? So here in my table, right, we're going to look for a pattern. It just so happens that the pattern in this right, is how did I get from 3 to 16.50? I multiplied by $5.50. How did I get from 4 tickets to a cost of 22? I multiplied by $5.50. How did I get from 5 tickets to 27.50? I multiplied by $5.50. So 5.5 five times the value of n equals the value of c. And so basically what we're saying here, right, is that Every ticket is $5.50 times however many tickets you buy would give you the total cost. So here we go, right? I've got number of tickets times 550 is going to equal C. So what I want to do is I want to find out how much six tickets cost. So when I substitute in six for N and then I solve that out, that's how I, how I would figure out how much six tickets cost. If you have a question right now, you should pause the video and you should come and see me. Another example. Ethan owes his mother some money. He pays her a set amount of money every week. How much money will he owe her after 12 weeks? Right. So. He owed her $75, and he pays her $5 every week. All right? So after one week, we subtracted $5, we got 70. After two weeks, we've subtracted 5 times 2, right? which would be 10. We've got 65. Right? So here we get we had minus 5, we had minus 5, we had minus 5 from week to week. Right, the pattern here 
is that if we look at where we started, which was $75, what we're doing is we're subtracting $5 for every week that he paid. So the equation to describe this would be the amount Ethan owes his mom, which was $75, minus $5 for every week he's paid. That gives the leftover amount. So for example, right, the amount I owe would be 75 after one week would be 5 times 1. So 75 minus 5, I still owe mom 70 bucks. Let's look at one more, right? The amount I owed her was 75 minus 5 dollars and I paid for five weeks. Five times five is 25. I still owe her $50. The question though, how much will he owe her after 12 weeks? So how much will he owe her? The original loan was 75, five dollars per week. We substitute in that 12. So order of operation says 5 times 12 first gets me 60. 75 minus 60, he still owes mom $15. Alright, why don't you try this one out. All right. The table shows the number of yards that a cyclist rides in S seconds. Find a pattern that relates the variable to the equation. So that's where we're going to start. What I want you to do is I just want you to pause the video and write an equation. So my equation is uh, the number of yards I ride is equal to 12 and 2 tenths times however many seconds I'm riding. Right. So 2 times 12 and 2 tenths would get me 24 and 4 tenths. 3 times 12 and 2 tenths would get me 36 and 6 tenths. So if you have a question about how I got that equation, you should pause the video and come and see me. Otherwise, let's figure out if the cyclist maintains the speed, how far is he going to ride in 8 seconds? So again, now we're going to substitute. How many yards is he going to ride if I substitute 8 in for S? So pause the video and solve that. You can see my margin math right here where I did 12 and 2 tenths times 8, but it would be 97 and 6 tenths yards. So you can use patterns to write the relationship, to write the equation between our variables. So I either want you to write the equation or complete the table and write the equation for both of these. Pause the video and try those out. So in this first example over here, I noticed that to get from J to M each time was a multiplying by 3. So M is equal to 3J. In the second equation, it was a little bit trickier. Um, I used a couple of strategies. Um, first, if you look across the Y line, you might notice the pattern plus 2, plus 2, so plus 2, plus 2. That's a strategy that could definitely help out. Right? You also need to think, though, how did I get from X to Y? And so my initial thought was maybe minus 3. That didn't work. And so I think this is a two-step equation. And so what I came up with here is that y is equal to 2x minus 7. And what I'm saying here, right, is that 4 times 4, or 4 times 2, excuse me, is 8, minus 7 is 1. 5 times 2 is 10, minus 7 is 3. 7 times 2 is 14, minus 7 is 7. 8 times 2 is 16, minus 7 is 9. If you have questions still, please come and see me. Otherwise, log on and complete the 4-9 practice buddy, and have a great day.